Good morning and welcome Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. Legal, lawful, constitutional, heck, even biblical tender. Gold and silver, the physical delivery, that is what we do. And quite honestly, we do it better than anybody. 800 592 that is our toll-free number. The website at allamericangold.com. We got office here in the Deer Valley Air Park. We got an office up there uh, on the Front Range in Johnstown, Colorado. Uh, we ship to everywhere in the United States and or U.S. properties. Yep, even the even the islands, right? U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, Saint uh, what? I forget Saint Thomas. I, I, I think we've shipped to pretty much Samoa, right? We've shipped some stuff out there. So uh, wherever you're tuning in, uh, thank you. Thank you so very, very much for your support. Uh, 23 years we've been doing this uh, 100% self-sufficient. Your orders is what keeps this show on the air. and You've been doing a great job. And why not? What a great investment it's been. really has been. Think about it. All over the years, uh, one of the things that has been new, and I love new, uh, the creation of the cryptocurrencies. There was a lot of debate out there. Right? I actually, believe it or not, well, I love it as an idea. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't feel that uh, it's going to turn out the way some people are going to hope. Uh, but competition is what it's all about, isn't it? Let us let them compete. Why can't gold compete against the dollar? Why can't gold compete against the euro? Let against Bitcoin. Let them all compete. Decide how you want to hold your assets. Right, think about it, especially in today's day and age with the computer and all that. You can you can have your money in anything you want. You should. Right, you can pick. You can decide. Hey, you know what? I want my money to be backed by gold. I want my money to be backed by Federal Reserve notes. I want my money to be backed uh, by Bitcoin. Right, and and have a true free system. Of course. They, listen, they'll never go for that, oh, right? Because here's the problem. They need to make sure all of our money's in that system, all of it. Why do you think they're, they're the attack on cash? It's just this gradual campaign, isn't it? Right? Just little by little by little. You know, it started out not, you know, oh, well, you know, the people counterfeit it, right? Remember? Right? And... uh you know, you had the, the bank robberies and, and, and that stuff. And, of course, right now, most of you know, right, robbing a bank's not very lucrative anymore. There's no money there. <laughs> I mean, they can hand you some ones, uh, maybe some uh, rolls of quarters. I don't know, something like that. But there's no money in the banks anymore. Well, very little. Right, so Robin Banks isn't very lucrative. I don't know about counterfeiting. I, I, I've, I, I guess it happens a little bit, uh, but that wasn't enough. Then they had, well, you know what? That's what drug dealers use. Right? You're, you're a drug dealer, and then of course the terrorist, right? Right? They just keep ramping up all, all the, the, the bad guy stuff. You know what's so funny is, is like in the crypto world, right? More of them use that than anything else. But one of the things is, how private is it, right? You're supposed to be able uh, to be pretty anonymous when when using this stuff. And and I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know enough about it. So, you know, I I don't don't say, um, you know, that, that it's fact or not fact. I will give you facts. Just something you may be getting in your mailbox. Uncle Sam wants his cut of your returns. The IRS announced Friday that it has begun sending letters to taxpayers 
who trade virtual currency. The agency warned that digital coin traders may have failed to report their investments properly and that they may owe gov- or, or may owe money to the government as a result. The IRS began sending out letters to more than 10,000 taxpayers and they said the letters will be out by the end of August. I guess it takes them a while. Right? It's the <laughs> It's the post office. Right? We, we don't know. Uh, I, uh, but it uh, takes a while, I guess. But by the end of August, taxpayers should take these letters very seriously by reviewing their filings and, when appropriate, amend past returns and pay back the taxes, the interest, and the penalties. The IRS is expanding their efforts involving virtual currency, including increased use of data analytics. We are focused on enforcing the law and helping taxpayers, see they're always here to help, fully understand and meet their obligations. The IRS will remain actively engaged in addressing non-compliance related to virtual currency transactions through a variety of efforts. I thought it was private. How do they know who you are? I don't know. Pitcher Radio News Hour. We'll be back. 800-951-0592. Just a little warning you guys out there if you get one of those letters take it serious uh nothing worse uh than the irs breathing down your throat uh and and we speak from experience uh we we got audited uh when when eric was still here we uh patriot got audited mostly because i guess we had the name patriot and at the end of the whole process which took forever Right, Wendy. Wendy's making sounds. It was horrible, uh, and, and finally, at the end, they they ended up saying to to us, "Hey, we don't even know why this happened." Right, we everything's fine. Blah blah. You know, the, we we owed nothing, and but it didn't even matter. By that point, we had spent so much time, effort, and money. Uh, it was exhausting, and it was stressful. Because you you know you start questioning yourself. Well, did we miss something, right? And and you know how the IRS is. It's not the tax, right? It's the penalties and the interest, right? They they they, they I'll take a thousand dollar mistake and turn it into a twenty thousand dollar mistake. I mean that's just how they are. And so I guess now they're they're going after the crypto guys. And I don't know how it works. And again, I, and I apologize. For, for not being able to tell you that, but somehow, at least on these 10,000 letters, uh, they know they know you did something with a, with, a, with a cryptocurrency of some kind, or at least they think they do. Uh, so, so anyway, if you get one of those, take it pretty serious, because uh, trust me, uh, I know from experience, you definitely don't want to do that. You know, here's the other thing. We've been talking... Um, quite a bit about 401ks, IRAs. And because I've Googled it, that's what I'm, I'm thinking in my mind. I'm, I, I now get, you know, the pop-ups. You know what I'm talking about. And I see these advertisements. I thought maybe they were gone, but they're not. About these gold companies out there that that tell you that you can store your IRA at your house. And I want you all to know I know it sounds it sounds wonderful. Matter of fact, this has been going on for a long time. Right? I mean, Eric's been gone for how long? It is going on for at least four or five years before he had retired. This thing has been going on 
for a while now where they say, we found a loophole. Just know this. Loopholes are no good, right? Unless you're, you know, the billionaires get loopholes. (laughs) All us regular folks, we don't get loopholes. But it, it was something where, you know, let's face it. When you think about gold, right, the most important thing is is be diversified, right? Hey, I'm going to have something that isn't a, a, a debt or a promise to pay, a hedge against the dollar, right? You think about, well, the dollar's doing pretty good right now. Yeah, maybe. Doing well, I guess, compared to other old fiat type currencies but then again when you think about the size of debts and all that stuff right there's so plenty to worry about and being able to have it where you can get to it is very appealing right i think that's the way to go right storing it where only you know where it's at a lot of wisdom in that you know with an ira and, and and I understand. Nobody likes to pay taxes. Right? Nobody. I hate paying taxes, but I got to. Right? And I do so willingly. Right? I, 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 I want to pay my fair share. Now, do I think my fair share is way too big? Of course. Of course. But we allowed it to happen. Look at that nonsense about raising the debt ceiling that these guys did. Ridiculous, three hundred and twenty billion more dollars. But when you don't want to pay the taxes, and you want to roll it over, a four hundred one k and into an IRA, and you want to do it into hard assets, you've got to store it somewhere else. We store our our golds all stored at the Delaware Depository. Well, these companies out there started running these, uh, you know, I'll call them what they are, these unscrupulous gold dealers out there, started running these these ads online. A couple of them actually even made YouTube videos telling you how there was a loophole that you could exploit and store your gold at your house. Right, your your IRA at your house. And well, technically it really wasn't at the house. That was the other part. But they said you could uh well, let me tell you how it works. It, it, so here's what they said. Here's what they wanted you to believe. That you could create an LLC. Right? And you can do that easily, right? Any every every state you create an LLC, you file the paperwork uh, for give or take for about a hundred bucks, you could create a company, and that's universal throughout the United States. And then you take that paperwork and you open up a bank account, and then what you do is you fill out paperwork with your current administrator, saying, "Hey, I want you to transfer the money to this administrator." Right, and the fact that it's held by a bank, the, the your account, they say, makes the bank the fiduciary, and therefore we found the loophole that would allow you then to take that money that you had transferred into that account, buy the precious metals, and then store them where you like, whether that's at the bank. Some of them said, hey, store it at the bank you opened the account at, which, you know, now the banks tell you you're not supposed to put any cash or coins or anything like that into your safety deposit boxes. Uh, others were a little more, even more, they said, ah, you can not store it at your house. fine as long as the account is at the bank. And that the bank is a fiduciary. The IRS Actually, and I want to say this was maybe four or five years ago now, actually added several amendments to the tax code to let as many people as possible know 
that is not legal. Right? The bank is not acting as the fiduciary. The person that opened the LLC is, and unfortunately, that would be you. And if you're caught doing it, here's what they're going to do. Let's, let's just use $100,000 as the example. Let's just say you did this. So you had $100,000 in a 401k or an IRA, and you, you transferred it to this new LLC that you created to buy gold with. And you said, hey, I didn't, I didn't sell, I didn't report it, right? I still have the IRA. I haven't sold out. I don't have to pay taxes on it. The IRS is going to say, when you sold it, if you get caught, if you sold it, we're going to add it on to the income of the year that you sold it, apply what the taxes you should have paid on it, and then, of course, they're going to hit you with what? The penalties and the fees. You know, in about five years, doing it that way, if five years later they catch you, that whole $100,000 is probably going to be gone. So just be careful out there. And I, and I only bring that up because I've been talking a lot about, you know, comparing to how a 401K and your 401K returns. Uh, and because I did that, now all of a sudden I get these pop-up ads along the side of, of uh, on certain pages that I, you know, when I, when I go uh, to a certain website and there's these pop-up ads, and I still see them out there. There's still companies out there telling you that there's a loophole in the law and that you can take an, you know, a 401k from four jobs ago or an existing IRA, roll it over and store it at your house or store it at the bank. You cannot. It's not legal. If you want to roll uh, a 40, an old 401k or existing IRA, if you want to roll it into a precious metals IRA, we can help you do it and do it legally where you're not going to have to worry about Uncle Sam coming after you. It does get stored in the Delaware Depository. Uh, there is paperwork involved. You do have to do a trustee to trustee transaction and all that stuff. But we actually ship the metals actually there. Right? So the metal, whether it's silver, gold, whatever it may be, is actually shipped to the depository I will tell you this as well at any point in a IRA legally set up you can tell the uh, the administrator in this case we use a company uh, called Gold Star Trust you can have your metal sent to you at any time Right, so you can have that metal delivered, but it would be the same as you cashing out. So just know that, yep, can you get the metal that you had in your IRA sent to your house? Absolutely you can. But when you do that, the IRS will view that as what? Hey, I sold my IRA, or I, I, and I need you're going to need to add that to your income, and you're going to need to pay the taxes and all that stuff on it. Uh, but just know that. So yes, you can eventually get the metal itself. If you get to uh, 59 and a half or older, right, you can get it sent to your house, pay the taxes, no penalties, right? It works just like any other uh, IRA would work. Uh, once you hit 70 and a half, right, then you got to start taking distributions, right? And then you know that you got to sell 10%. Because Uncle Sam wants its tax dollars. And the same thing, you can have that shipped to your house if you want. right? You, there's, there's nothing uh, that stops you from doing it. But I just wanted to bring it up because, like I said, we've been talking a lot about the 401K and the IRA. Now I'm still, unfortunately, there's still companies out there doing it uh, and, and really just trying to, to, to whack you. And, and, of course, they tell you, hey, you can put old gold in it and all this other stuff. Things you can't do. Uh, but if you're looking into it, you've thought about it, give us a call. We can give you all the particulars uh, and, and, and help you. 800-951-0592. Uh, no, you cannot store 
your precious metals IRA at your house. Uh, if you do, uh, get ready. The IRS is probably going to send you, <laughs> send you a letter to go along with all the cryptocurrencies. Hey, when we get back, we're going to talk about the middle class and the new problem with the new tax laws that's starting to cause even more middle class Americans well, to flee the states they're from because, well, they can't afford to pay the taxes anymore. And what that could possibly mean, you know, you start thinking about where it is, where are people coming from? What states? California comes to mind. Illinois comes to mind. New York comes to mind. New Jersey comes to mind. All right, then you start thinking about some of these other states, Michigan, Pennsylvania. You know what all these states got in common? Real, real big pensions and real, real high taxes. Talk about that next. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily broadcast delivering a conservative pro-family perspective since 1983. As an author, speaker, and the founder of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Mrs. Schlafly spent an astounding 70 years in public service, protecting and defending the Constitution the unborn, and America's sovereignty. Following that legacy, here's the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Senator Kamala Harris is one in a long line of Democrat presidential hopefuls gnawing at the bit to take a swing at President Trump next November. She's a multiracial woman positioning herself as the most diverse candidate in the Democratic field. She married a California lawyer at age 50 and has no children. When you toss the California liberal vibe with her lack of family and her former job as the Attorney General in California, you have a mix that is sure to be a tough sell to the steelworkers and coal miners in Pennsylvania. There's just no relatability there. On top of her relatability issue, Kamala Harris is hurting herself with a radical plan to shift wages from gritty blue-collar jobs to soft, safe jobs. To overcome the purported pay gap between men and women, she wants to hit companies with fines of 1% of their profits for every 1% in wage difference between more dangerous male jobs and less dangerous women's jobs. Harris's proposal covers almost every bad idea opposed by Phyllis Schlafly all in one package. The theory of comparable worth was discredited in the 1980s. Kamala renamed it Equal Pay so she can pretend men and women are being paid unequally for the same work. In the real world, we know men are paid more than women because they tend to work longer hours and take more dangerous jobs. Women are more likely to work part-time or leave the workforce for years at a time so they can raise their children. There's nothing wrong with women making those choices, but that doesn't entitle them to make extra money above their value on the open market. Kamala Harris's proposal is not really about making things fair for men and women. It's all about putting more taxes on hard-working Americans. Her fines would steal $180 billion over 10 years. Like other socialist schemes being floated by Democrat candidates, Senator Harris's proposal would bring the Trump jobs boom to a screeching halt. It would be particularly hurtful to the men working blue-collar jobs rightly compensated for the higher risk and unpleasant working conditions that they endure. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. You've seen the desperation of women's marches, the disgrace of Planned Parenthood, the rise of savvy young conservative women. Radical feminism is heading down a dead-end road. Voice your opinion on what's really important to women at phyllisschlafly.com. That's phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening and join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. 800-951-0592. Uh, Big debate now. New Jersey, Illinois, New York, and other states are now trying to uh, lobby the federal government that the new uh, tax plan that the president put forth, remember the big tax cut to the business, uh, the cap on the, the deductions that you paid in your state and local taxes. So if you lived in a high-tax state, you used to be able to write all that off on your federal taxes. Now with the new tax cut plan, you only can write off a certain amount, and then the rest of it you have to pay. So in other words, hey, we just hit you with another tax increase. 
And now, here's what's happening in these states. The really rich people, they're moving. And I don't know how they move, to be fair. Are they moving, or do they buy a house like in Florida or Arizona and say, hey, that's our residence and still have the other, you know, and go back and forth or whatever? I don't know, right? But either way, they are officially no longer tax-paying residents of these high-tax states. And now, all of a sudden, guess what? The middle class has got to take on more and more of the burden. And now New Jersey says if something isn't done, the state of New Jersey will be unable to meet its obligations. And they said the average salt deduction claim in Bergen County, New Jersey, was more than $24,700 in state and local tax. Now, I'm assuming Bergen County, that might, I'm hoping that's an affluent area, but tw- can you imagine $25,000 in state and local tax? And then you only, you used to be able to write all that off on your federal. Now you only can write off ten grand. And now all these people are like, hey, you know what? We're rich. We're out of here. Get ready, middle class. I don't, again, I told you last week. What are we talking about? Pension, what, six trillion? And it's coming real soon. You know, the great stock rally. It's another one. You know, I, I told you about 401ks, right? We went back 12 years. And I didn't, right? There wasn't, it's not my data. I didn't massage it in any way, I didn't spin it in any way. This was the data out of Vanguard, which in the actual release, they made note that, hey, we're kind of the best of the best. So a lot of you may not be getting as good as we're saying here, right? Another way, and I get it, right? They're trying to get business. So they're letting people know, hey, if you didn't do this good, give us a call. Not you, right? You can't call. The CEOs of the big Fortune 500 companies would have to call. But in there, they said over the 12-year period, stocks had doubled, right? 13 and change, 27 and change, stocks doubled. The average median, median balance was the exact same. About $22,000. And then when you said, wait a minute, okay, we got a lot of these millennials, right? They're just getting started. Their balances are low. You know, let's not put shade on it. Let's look at the older people. Let's look at the people 55 to 64. Stocks doubled. The median balance is down ten grand. And the reason for that is simple. The people that are retired, right, they did better. They did better, right? Their balance, those were bigger balance, those balances are gone. Right? And the people now that are hitting 55, 56, 57, they got way way less money than the previous guys that were 55, 56, 57. Even though, you know, like I said, stocks had doubled. You know what was funny? Gold had doubled. Because gold is like seven hundred bucks right now. It's fourteen twenty. What's a, up up a buck buck and change right now? Fourteen twenty. And I said to everybody, man, if you had bought gold twelve years ago, you, you'd have more, right? You, you would have done better. You'd have done a lot better. And and this is kind of uh, what I've been saying all along. And of course, remember, over those twelve years, they whacking you with the fees and whacking you with all of these other things. And then uh, we got GDP. Remember GDP on Friday? And I told you, right, wave at the RV guy driving down the freeway because, you know, apparently uh, everybody bought RVs, right? Kind of a weird report. Uh, It was RVs and cars, right? Those were the RVs was the biggest growth in GDP followed by, you know, the cars. And I told you, right, 
it was funny because the RV dealers, you know, the, the guys that make the RVs, say shipments to dealers is down 22% in the first five months uh, of the year. And then uh, uh, over the weekend, this report came on. This was car dealers talking to the car companies themselves. We are turning down cars, and we are being more picky on the cars we stock. Brian Benstock, manager of uh, Paragon Honda in New York City. We just can't take more. We are full. New car sales have been slumping in many of the world's major auto markets, right? China down 12%. I guess it could be worse. We could be China. In the United States, after many years of strong sales, things have been slowing down dramatically. At the same time, the price of a new vehicle continues to rise. It's a double whammy. Mike Jackson, chairman of Auto Nation, right? I would, I think, I don't know if they're the largest. If they're not the largest, they're down near close to the largest dealer in the country. Customers are having monthly payment shock. The slump in sales has already forced companies to start cutting production, right, including General Motors and Ford. Despite declining car sales, manufacturers kept uh, uh, profits by selling more profitable SUVs. They said, well, I don't, you know, there you go. But again, now the car dealers are saying we're full. Can't take any more. We're having payment shock issues. And I, I, I don't know, but I'm just telling you that those were the two big things driving GDP. Our fees uh, by autos. When we get back, there was something else in GDP, too. I didn't even know they did this one. It's fascinating. I can't wait to share it with you. Hey, we're back. Uh, 800-951-0592. Wendy is hot. In case you guys want, <laughs> wanted to know. You know, we're going to be a, a, a gold company and also a meat company because you can hang meat in the studio. It's so cold in here. Uh, and and Wendy, Wendy's telling me how hot she is. So, uh I'm going to put on my, my jacket in the middle of summer because uh, uh, Wendy's got her medication got changed, and now she's she's running hot. So just keep that in mind. If my teeth start chattering, you're going to know why. It's only 75. It's only 75. Not in here, though. It's, it's In here, it's in the 60s. Well, out there. Yeah, not in the studio. So anyway... But uh, and, and poor Wendy, she's she's walking with a limp, and uh, her knees giving out. Getting old sucks, you know all that. But anyway, getting back to what I was going to tell you. So this GDP report came out, and it, it, this was the the, and they do this. I don't even know how if they do it every year or if it's every three or four or five years. They went back, and they revised like five years of GDP, right? They One of the things they revised is apparently we didn't grow at 3% last year, right? And I think they they settled at 2.9. I mean, splitting hairs. But one of the things that came out later was one of the things that they adjusted was the new set of of profit data exposing the economy's vulnerabilities leading further into the, well, next downturn. According to the government, over the last five years, they said that profits from Wall Street publicly traded companies has been zero. Uh, well, let me 
there's been no growth in the profits. So I'm thinking to myself, first thing that came to mind is that means the valuations that they've been telling us are way off. Right? You hear it? I just heard it again this morning. One of the idiots on the day, oh, you know, stocks are trading at 18 times earnings. And that's, that's reasonably priced. And, of course, I know that what they talk is 18 times future earnings. And all of those future earnings are, you know, most companies, as we know, like this, this latest profit season, earnings season. Right? What did they do? Right before earnings came out, 100-some-odd companies said, oh, wait a minute. Right? Over 20% of the S&P said, oh, hey, you know those, those earnings we told you? Yeah, they're going to be a lot less than that. Right? And, and then they tell us, and of course, you know, historically, the number was eight. Right? All in the, the 70s, the 50s, the 80s, the 90s. A, a fairly priced Wall Street was eight times earnings. Remember? It's in all these other fantasies that they make up and try to convince us. Right? That's all. Oh, it's like now, now it's 18. And, of course, 18 probably really means 20-something. And and they say, well, you know, it's because rates are so low that they can be higher. Who says that? I don't know. Is that, is that true or not? I don't know. Right? Obviously, someone made it up. And then everybody else said, hey, that's a good one. Let's use that line. But then for the, I guess the next thing that came to mind is, why is the government... What does that mean? Does that mean that Wall Street wasn't truthful in the earnings that they said they had? Right? I mean, they come out, they do all the paperwork, they file all the stuff, they put their earnings on TV. Was that not the earnings? I'll tell you what I want to believe, because I've been researching it, and I can't, I can't figure it out. If the government just set a number and then said, oh, you know what, like a lot of things. Oh, we were too optimistic and we got to lower them, right? Which means, does that mean GDP had been lower the whole time? The answer to that is yes, right? All the GDP figures, right, they all got revised downwards. Matter of fact, I didn't see a single year where they said GDP was more, not one. But I guess I don't know. Is it the government was swagging the number? Or did, or was it, hey, you know what? After looking at what the companies actually said, we found out that ah, there's a little fudge in that number and that all these companies, you know, be after the fact, were they just all revising after the fact? You know, and, 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 I, and I guess I think about uh, the IRS and the crypto stuff. Right, the 10,000 people that are going to get a little letter. Is that what happened to these companies? Uh-oh. Whoops. IRS sent us a little letter. Quick, go back and revise 2015 and 2016 and 2017. Revise those earnings down so we let them know. No, no, no. We, we paid enough in taxes. We just didn't make the profits we made. I don't know which is which. Unfortunately, I got a bad feeling the government just makes it up, right? And like anything, they want the number to be better than what it really is. And one of the ways they can do that is, hey, let's just lie about what the profits are, right? And then we can say, oh, look at it, look at it. Yeah, GDP grew. Look at the profits. I, I, I don't know, but very interesting. They went back and said that corporations, publicly traded corporations, are earning the exact same amount today as they were five years ago. Man, I don't know, right? I, I mean, where do you go from that? Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back. Final segment coming up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. This is why you need to be diversified. You can't assume what you're being told is truthful. And again, in the modern era of computers, 
Why is this happening? Why do we just learn today that, hey, for the last five years, either the companies themselves have been telling us one thing and, and then going to the IRS, hey, you know, that report, that, that wasn't real. Here's the real one, which I worry is probably the truth, or the government just makes it up, which, you know, probably a little bit of both. Here's another one of why. Thanks to a broken regulatory process, the FAA has been passing off routine oversight to manufacturers for years. And in the case of the Boeing 737 MAX, the plane was so advanced that the regulars, the regulators handed complete control to Boeing. They said that the, the, the software, you know, the one that, that uh, still is not fixed. By the way, oh boy, one of the, one of the airlines blasted Boeing this morning, talking about job cuts and everything else. They said that the oversight that the FAA had no clue how Boeing's automated anti-stall system worked and that regulators had never even independently assessed the risk of the dangers of the software. The FAA had left, uh, they said due to turnover at the FAA, that there was a total of two inexperienced engineers overseeing Boeing's work on the 737 MAX, the FAA eventually handed over all responsibility for approval to the manufacturer. Boeing didn't have to share the details of the system with the two engineers, and they weren't even aware of how it worked. And Boeing was allowed to essentially certify their own planes without the FAA knowing what what even they were certifying. They didn't even know how it worked. They didn't even run a stress. They didn't even take Boeing's results and then try to do it themselves. Amazing. And, and again, right, this is kind of the problem when you have all of the the this ma- these massive corporations right these massive corporations that are so big and so powerful right that and they're so in bed with our elected officials stuff like this happens how could that have happened it wasn't like i mean this was a brand new plane with brand new software. You know, someone may want to test this stuff. You know? <laughs> right? And hey, I don't think we should take Boeing's word for it either. Well, now you know why stuff happens. Don't take your financial planner's word for it. Don't take my word for it. You know you should put some gold and silver away. I hope you do it with us. 800 800- 9510592 Pizza Radio News Hour the open forum coming up next